Hi there, it's Peter here again. You're watching the Scroll Magic 101 free online course for front end developers and designers where you will learn the basics of Scroll Magic API in under 50 minutes. In this video, you will learn how to disable animations for the scrolling in the reversed order and also how to create animations for multiple elements on one page using just one scene inside of each loop. Okay, so we've got it nicely working. We are adding the fade-in class to the project and then removing it 90% later, 90% of the scrolling later. And now let's remove the duration and let's only fade it in without fading it out later on. We'll keep the trigger hook as 0.9 and let's see what's happening. Now we are fading the project in and it stays visible and never fades out. Okay, so this is cool. Let's say that if someone scrolls back to the top of the page, we don't want it to fade in again, okay? For that, there is a handy setting inside of the scroll magic scene that we can define and that is a reverse, reverse false. If we set a reverse to false, this animation will only happen once. And if we preview this in the browser, we'll see that the animation is only happening once and is never repeated again. Okay, so the reverse is by default set to true, but if you want something just fade in or the animation happen only once, set the reverse to false and the animation will only happen once. Okay, handy setting, reverse false. Now let's see how we could trigger this animation for all three projects instead of just one. As you can see, the other two projects are invisible because we've set the starting point in the style sheet to be opacity zero and visibility hidden. So the other two projects are invisible. And if we wanted to bring them into the view in a similar fashion as, as the first project, we could do it the hard way. And that would be by copying the first scene and just duplicating it changing the command, we'll leave the command because this is not the way we want to do it. We change the our scene to our scene two, project 02 IMG, we'll leave everything as it is, set class toggle on the project 02, and that should be it. Okay, so the main thing is changing the variable name, changing the trigger element and the set toggle class, or so the element we want to change the class on, and we can also change the name of our fate indicators just so we don't mix them up. We'll do the same thing for the third project, changing it to three, three and three and three and see what we've got in a browser. I'll refresh the page. We've got the first, oops, We've got the first project fading in. We've got the second project fading in and the third one as well. Okay, so it's working fine. I'll just remove the reverse false just so we can scroll a couple of times through the page. So I'm re removing the reverse false from all three projects and scrolling down the page and we should see it fading in and fading out on the other way. And if we go back to the same spot, we'll see the projects fading in again. Okay, so now we've got it working for multiple scenes, but as you can see, there's a lot of code inside of here. And if we add it to the HTML another section, we would need to again duplicate this JavaScript code. Okay, so that's not very flexible. That's not really elegant way. The much easier way is to use a loop, okay? So we'll create a loop and include these scenes inside of it. We will loop through each project, each dot project element, and we will create a scene for each of them individually. We'll write a jQuery loop, each loop, targeting the dot project, so every element with the class project, each function inside of it, and we'll close it with semicolon and then inside of it 
will paste the scene. Okay, so from the end to the starting comment, we're cutting it up and pasting it inside of the loop, aligning everything. Now the JavaScript will loop through the page, target every project element and create the scene and add it to a controller. Okay, so this, this will work just fine. The only thing we need to change is the trigger element. Okay, at the moment we've got it hard coded to project one IMG, which means only that project will be triggered. If we change the trigger element to this and the set class toggle to this as well, let's see what happens in a browser. Okay, so let's refresh it, scroll down and we've got it as we originally had it. Okay, so we don't see any animation because we're scrolling too slow, but if we scroll faster, you'll see how that image fades in. The reason is that because that the this now sets the trigger position to the top of the project container, not the top of the image. Okay, so we'll need to tweak that and target the image. And let's do a little console lock inside of the each loop. And let's see what the this returns. Okay, I'll refresh the page again. Open the dev tools, go to the console, refresh the page, and this is what the JavaScript returns. We don't want to target the project itself. We want to get the children IMG. Okay, so we want to get the child element IMG. And that will be just simply targeting dot children and zero inside of the square brackets. Okay, so we want the first children, first child element, which is the image. And if we scroll down now, we see that start fade scene, jump down to align with the top of the image and reveals and triggers the animation at the right time for each of our three projects. Okay, scrolling up and down, reverse working as well. And that's how we create a scene for multiple elements. Now let's get rid of the console lock and recap it again. We're setting the trigger element to be this children, which is the image. And that's how we're triggering it for all the projects separately. We will continue exploring the Scrollmagic API in the following video. But if you want to follow me step by step, simply hop on to my website, sign up for free and download the working files. The link is in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.